I'm Mario Rousseau from South Africa. I come from a place called Bontiwil on the Cape Flats. Um, I was born there. I grew up with my grandmother and my mother was about 15 years old when I was born, so um, she was way too young to raise me. So I came out of a broken family and out of an abusive family relationship. I was seeking that, that family ship, that unity, that thing I didn't felt I received at home. I saw the gangs was always in groups and stuff like that. They had all the nice clothes, all the blings, all the chains, um, all the cars and the money. And I thought that, that, that became my role models and that's where I wanted to be. And so I started operating and moving with gang. I had no respect for society. I had no respect for life. I had no respect for, for the law or anything. Because in gangsterism, I was taught how to break all the rules and therefore I had no feelings for other people. I was running from town to town and I thought the police will never catch me. And in every place I came, my, my lifestyle of crime and, and of violence just started to escalate. Before I turned 19 years old, the police finally caught me and charged me for over 50 cases against me. Going to prison at an early age, I hanged out with all the prisoner guys and then eventually I decided to join a gang and that for me was my part of my security. So I was seen as the leader of a 26 gang in that area. For me, a turning point in prison came in a big gang fight where I was about to be killed and I was, I was really bad, um, bruised up and I was placed into a confined cell. While I was in that cell, I couldn't sleep because I had broken ribs and um, I had a broken nose. And on the third day, there came to me two inmates um, with a Bible and, and um, I had no interest in reading a Bible. I had no interest in God or nothing. So I just chucked the Bible under the bed. And that very same night, while I was in my cell, I had a pain coming over my chest. And what seemed to me that, that that's my last breath, that I'm about to die. I called unto God and I asked God, Please save me. And when I cried out to God, I just sensed a big light coming into the cell. Um, and it was so enormous, I couldn't look into the light. So I closed my eyes and I thought I was busy getting crazy. I was started to, to speak in tongues, to pray in the spirit. I started to quote scriptures and God said to me, go take out the Bible under the bed. So when I got up, I felt I was totally healed. So I would open the Bible. It was Jeremiah chapter four, verse one and two. I read the scripture, I saw my name standing in the Bible in capital letters and it read, Oh Mario, if you will return to me, if you will put away your detestable idols, then nations will come to know me. So I got such a holy fear of God that God was actually speaking to me. This is where I had an amazing encounter with the Holy Spirit. And only after the Spirit of God came over me, I actually start to see how God started to use me. So every night I would go to the toilet, take my Bible, I would just worship God. While developing this relationship with God, there was no longer that stinking smell in the toilet. It was for me like that sweet aroma. So for me, my hook with the spirit was special. It was intimate. When I came out after 13 years being locked up in prison, I had to go and ask my family for forgiveness for, for the wrong stuff that I've done. For the first time, I, I could tell my mom and my dad that I love them. I got married about two years ago. We had a baby girl and we called her Phoebe. When I met Christ, a new hope arised in my life. No matter where you come from, no matter where you are, there's a hope. But if you don't have the Spirit of God, you won't have that freedom to live, that freedom to move, that freedom to breathe the gospel of what Christ did in my life.